Okay, this lesson is mostly vocabulary. Uh, we're going to talk about different parts of circles and give you some uh, terms to practice using so that they become a little more familiar to you if they aren't already. And uh, for the next couple of, of lessons where we're talking about circles, we're going to be using these, these vocabulary terms pretty heavily. So you're going to want to definitely make sure and review them if, uh, if they aren't triggering right away and what, uh, what they mean. So let's start with, uh, let's draw a circle here real quick. Where we got this, and whoops, that's not what I wanted. Let's try it again. Let's try you. Is that going to work? And then, ah, yeah, there we go. Good. So here's a circle. And we want to uh, start with the radius. So the radius starts at the center of a circle. And it's a straight line that runs from the center to any point on the circle. And of course, the radius is the same everywhere because that's the definition of a circle. A circle is, by definition, all of the points that are the same distance from any given point. And we call that, that given point the center. So radius, which is usually specified by an R, is that distance from the center out. Now a chord is a line segment that runs between any two points on the circle. So a chord looks like this. Let me get my straight line tool. I had it replaced with my circle tool though. There we go. So here's a chord. Yeah. And H O R D. There we go. The diameter would be a chord that passes through the center of the circle. So if we have a chord that actually goes right across through the middle from any point to any point as long as it goes through the middle, that represents the diameter. And the diameter is usually abbreviated with a D. Yeah? A secant is very similar to a chord. Um, a secant and a chord are almost the same thing. The only difference is that a secant line doesn't actually stop at the edges of the circle. It's an actual line that goes clear through the circle and out the other side. So here's a, an example of a secant line right here. And you won't see a whole lot of those until you get more into trigonometry, but it's good to know the term. Um, and what the difference between a secant and a chord is. If you just draw arrows on the end of a chord um, and show that it goes on forever, then you've sort of turned that chord into a secant line. Um, a tangent, again, tangent very similar to a chord or a secant. The only difference is that a tangent just touches the circle in one place. So if you have a line that comes by and then just sort of bangs into the circle in one individual little spot, that line is a tangent T-A-N-G-E-N-T. -E there we go. <laughs> a tangent line. Wow. Tangent lane, tangent line. There we go. All right, good. So a tangent line bumps into the side of the circle in one spot. That point where it hits, actually, we call a point of tangency, which, again, kind of makes sense. Point of tangency. Let's make that a different color so it stands out a little better. Right there point of tangency, where that line bumps into the circle. Cool. So we have the center of the circle. We have the radius, which runs from the center to the edge, anywhere on the edge. We have the diameter, which really is two radii, right? It's the radius from one side to the center, and then from the center to the opposite side. So really a radius times two is a diameter. They're this, they're, you know, radius is half of the diameter. A chord is like a diameter that goes across anywhere where it doesn't hit the center. And then a secant is a chord with arrows on the end that just keeps going. So a lot of these terms are very similar to each other. You just have to see what the slight difference between them is. So it makes it, uh, gives you something to use as a reference. All right, let's apply these to our example questions. Scroll on down and let's see what we got. 